coming up on this episode of Courage Over Comfort by Matt Logan Speaks. When you truly love someone, like love the verb, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You're willing to do what they need and not what they want. Learning yes. to do what they need and not what makes you feel comfortable. Welcome everybody to another episode of Courage Over Comfort. My guest is kind of, it's going to be really difficult for me to say her title, so I might let her do it, but I'm going to try. So please help me welcome Lachelle Weemy, nurse anesthetist. You got it. Did I say it right? Strong work. Yeah. All right. Perfect. I've been practi- practicing for like weeks, <laughs> if you Perfect. believe that. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, Welcome. I really, you know, uh, I wanted to ask you here because you're a nurse anesthetist. And now if I say it more often, I'm going to really screw it up, right? Yeah, no, you're good. Um, But you're on this, uh, to me, from looking outside, you're on this course, right? Yeah. And on that course, it seems like it's pretty smooth and pretty nice and you don't need to do anything else. And and all of a sudden you run into Shaq, right? Right. I remember (laughs) remember that. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And why did you run into him? You kind of stepped outside of your comfort zone, right? I totally did. Yeah. Um, what brought you to that place? Okay. So uh, you want me to just tell you the story about tell, when I met yeah, Shaq? Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, because something brought you there. Yeah. Well, so I was um, faculty for our Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia program. And so every other year I get to go to a conference where I te- get to literally learn how to teach better. So that nice. was awesome. So we were in San Antonio, Texas. Turns out he loves San Antonio. Wow. And um, we had gone back down to the service desk because my friend had lost her key and so we were down there and i'm looking down and all of a sudden i see these giant feet and i look up i kept looking up because you think he's like seven feet tall and um i'm like holy crap like that shaquille o'neal right and so i kind of j- nudged my friend and and the two of us went back to the elevator because we were too scared to talk to him right and we both were like holy crap like that was shaquille o'neal and the bellman in the elevator was like, you guys should totally just go talk to him. We're like, no, no. And we went back up to the hotel room. We got up in a couple of, you know, a little bit of courage and we went back down. And this is where my nerd comes out because <laughs> I, I knew for sure that I just, you know, you don't want to- I should have put that in the introduction no, now, I tot- think. I'm such nerd a nerd, ca- yeah. I am. I'm, I love will it. 100% claim that. But I, I just feel so much that we bypass so many things in life because yeah. we're scared, right? And then we live with the regret of never going forward. I'm like, what's the worst thing that could happen, right? Well, he could probably take me out. That'd, be, that'd <laughs> it, get him on the news. So. Right, it'd be like a, that, right. the fly on the table right, with the, right. you know, flick so, of the finger. So I actually went up to him and this is the nerd, right? I'm like, excuse me, Mr. O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but he was so gracious and he get, you know, got a picture with us and, you know, it was great. We talked to him for a couple of minutes and went on, on our way. But yeah, every year when that picture comes up on Facebook, I just kind of giggle to myself. Yeah. I I thought it was uh, because I knew a little bit that um, you didn't like those situations yeah. already because we've known each other for a while. Yeah. But um, the I, I thought it was great to see that. And um, so then I started like, oh, I, I start watching and what can I learn from you and some of those things and taking those steps of, of courage. And you also, you got into a business. Mm-hmm. You are doing your own podcast now and you're just like, was that the the moment that you stepped out and said I can do all these other things and it's not doesn't need to be a straight path and I don't need to be comfortable and yeah, that's I want to help question. people? Um, no, no, no. Um, I think that came as a process. I think yeah. like for me, Matt, like a lot of this has to do with my faith, and so I hope it's okay that I bring that back in this conversation because that's just who I am for sure. Um, but you know, God has brought me down this path graciously and he's been patient with me. And he's let me kind of take my my moments of courage with my safety net slowly, I guess, is the best way for me to describe this. And so, you know, I had been on this path career-wise. Yeah. I went to school, got my nursing degree, went back to school, got my master's degree, went back to school, got my doctorate degree, working at, in my opinion, one of the best healthcare systems in the world, um, getting a chance to teach for that program was legitimately my goal as a career from the time that I knew I wanted to be a nurse anesthetist. I wanted to be in that program. And the fact that I was literally living my dream job with, you know, the husband and the boy and a girl that are healthy at home, like everything seems to be perfect. Living in my dream house that we built when I was in my 20s, like who gets to do that, right? 
And so from the outside looking in, all of that was perfect, but God knew that there was more for me. He knew that there was something else in me that needed to come out. And he brought me that in a very unconventional way. Um, how that got started really in my, my courage was, is really starting the business that I started. And that alone was, was completely off base because it's in a skincare business of all things. I'm, I, I consult people for, for skin. I didn't even wash my face before I started this business. That's what's hilarious is wow. that God like brought this like random thing into my I life. I even washed my face. I didn't. I was like, <laughs> okay, so I was a girl in the shower that whatever like Pantene Pro-V happened to fall on my face and the That's shower was the best it got, right? Love like it. that was it. And and so I remember thinking like, that's funny, God. And for whatever reason though, he kept just, he kept at it and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I would see all of these posts on Facebook and, and it would get me going. And I was like, at one point I finally just said, okay, God, like, I know this is from you because I would never seek this out. You don't let me stop thinking about it. So fine, fine, I'll do it. But you have to send me people I can help. And within six months, all of a sudden, I was making enough money from this little side business to be able to cut back at work a day a week. And that's what he did to me was reveal what I really needed. Because the thing was, is that even though I'm in my dream job, my dream job was no longer my dream. Mm. My dream was being a mom and being challenged and fulfilled, right? And one of my, I'm gonna, I can't believe I'm going to put this out there, but whatever. <laughs> one of my dreams someday is to write a leadership book on how to lead our children because our family is the most important team we'll ever lead. And I, I read tons of books on leadership yeah. and listen to podcasts. And I was like, that's what I want to do. And I, I literally had this aha moment, Matt, where... Can I pause you for yeah. a second? So leadership for kids, like um, there's not a lot of that out there yeah. like real leadership it's yeah. like how to raise your kids and how but explain that a little bit more yeah, help, help I, me understand that yeah more. so i think that um you know i read books or we read books on running companies right yeah. how to have a mission and vision statement how to hire and fire how to set goals how mm -hmm. to do all of these things and i feel like those things are amazing concepts that have built beautiful helpful companies all over the world but why waste it on industry? Why waste those amazing principles that have brought so much good into the world on everybody else's family, right? Yeah. And and that's, that was my aha moment because the deal is, is that I have this dream that's been in my, my soul for a while and someday I'm gonna have the time to, to write this book, right? But that someday at the speed that I was going with my job, knowing that I was putting in the hours that I was putting in while my family, my husband's a teacher, so he's at home with my kids in the summer, they're at their pool and I'm in my office. And I had this realization, Matt, that I'm gonna get to the point where I'm ready and I have the time to write that dang book and it's for everybody else's family but my own yeah. because I wasn't present enough to give my kids the gift that I want to share with the world. Having that foresight is incredible. That's rare. That's really rare. Yeah. You needed to be in that moment and then when when they're ready, yeah. you'll be ready. Right. That's huge. Wow. Yeah. So I think that that was kind of my aha moment. Like, okay. And then realizing that even though this business was not something that I felt was what my career path was going to be, recognizing that God put it in my life at the exact moment that I needed because I knew he knew he knows that I'm the breadwinner of my family and that I'm not courageous enough to just completely leave that behind yet. Um, so he gave me something to do alongside of it to slowly break away, right? Um, he also gave me this opportunity to see what I needed to see at the time before it was too late. Yeah. That that's, that's key, isn't it? I, I, I'm really guilty of that. Yeah. Like I'm super guilty of that. I, I mean, even today, I, we all get wrapped up into right. things and especially right. what's happening right now. Yeah. And I mean, just quite frankly, I'm trying to work as hard as I can because what if it all falls apart? I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to gather, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm the, the squirrel in the summertime. Right. And uh, just gather all this to, to try and hang on to. But that's really not the way to do it. 
and I think that you know I'm not like immune to that. And you can ask yeah. my husband; like sure. he gets. I think that my ambition is one of my favorite qualities about myself, but it's probably his least, <laughs> right? Because I love what I'm doing so much that I get caught up into it and I can't, it's yeah. hard for me to stop sometimes. So I'm not like by all means an expert in priorities, but I'm getting there and I have the insight now because I was given that gift to have that insight, right? For sure. We talked about platforms yeah. off camera, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's where you can write the best, most successful book. And I mean mm -hmm. successful in the sense that it's, 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 it's successful to you. Right. It makes sense to you yeah. and which will help other people. Right. But you can't do that yet. Right. Your platform will be experience. Right. And you that those insights right now will go in the book. Exactly. Later. And that's the thing that's so interesting too, because even though I'm freeing up time, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've been able to cut back at work because of my business, because I do it in such part time hours. Um, but it's it you're right. It doesn't this is not the time yet. Yeah. And and I feel so much that he's he's bringing me these experiences so that when the time is right, I'm going to have everything I need to share with people. 100%. Yeah. You met my baby. I did. Right? He's yes. not much of a baby, no. is he? No. <laughs> he's a little taller than I am. Yeah. Has more facial hair than I do. You know, he's 20 years old. Uh, um, you talked about agape love. Yes. And in this leadership book, um, I just, I, I hope you're okay we paused on that for a moment. Yeah. I know you were kind of going on your story, but yeah, I, I, no. I, I'm very intrigued by it. Mm -hmm. And so w with that agape love and, and leadership with kids, um, I can really look back and point back to all the moments that I really fouled up, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. it's really easy to do that right, right now. It's really hard to do it in the moment, obviously. But, you know, hopefully they, if, if they're watching or listening, hopefully they'll get along with me okay now. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully they can see the things that... Um, I, I understood as an adult, could see those things that I laid out for them and why I was hard on them for those right. moments, right? Mm -hmm. So explain that a little bit about why you think that's so important, because obviously you think that's extremely yeah. important with the book and the, that you're 100%. working towards. Yeah, so I think love. that um, so many times we go off of feelings, right? And we think of love as a feeling. Right. But true love, true agape love is service. Yeah. And one of the most instrumental books that I've read on my leadership journey was called The Servant. Highly okay. recommend it. Sure. And um, easy to read because it's written in a fable, but it talks about a man in his journey towards leadership at work and learning about agape love and learning about servant leadership. And when you truly love someone, like love the verb, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You're willing to do what they need and not what they want. Learning yes. to do what they need and not what makes you feel comfortable, right? Yeah. And so in, in leadership, in parenthood, agape love and doing what others need and not what they want is going to serve them in the best way. And I think that right now, what we're, you know, we were talking about before we started to record is, is where we're at in the world, yeah. right? And I think that that's where we're lacking, honestly is true agape love, true servanthood for our children, for the people we lead. Because as the nerd that I am, I've read and listened to countless things on leadership, countless things on just people's stories of what makes them successful, right? Yeah. The one common thread that I've noticed in every single thing I've ever read or listened to is that successful people are accountable for their own actions. Yeah. They do not let themselves remain victims. They don't make excuses. They don't stay there. And I think that. But but what they what they also do is they they don't stay there, but they learn from there. Right. 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 Yes. I, I mean, they really learn from there. Yes. There's a lot of people that don't stay where they're at, but didn't learn anything. Right. And even and leaders. One hundred percent. And I think that that can go back to agape love, learning from from things. Yeah. Let the beauty be in the bitterness, right? Um, let us to be able to to be accountable and not make excuses and stay there forever. If we don't let our children or the people that we're leading experience the bitterness, experience what it's like to have to be in the valleys, to learn from things, to be able to step up and be accountable, 
we're robbing them of that experience. We're robbing them of, of letting them become the people that they could be. And so you have And they become people. They, they become people. They, Kids become people, like people. really. Yeah. Amazing people, yeah. right? And so if I look back at this and I think, oh gosh, you know, I don't want to discipline my child because they might get mad at me or... Because they don't get that they become people. Right. I really believe that. I really believe that they don't think they're going to become people yeah. someday. Yeah. I mean, they, you know what I'm saying, right? right? Like yeah. they're always their kid. Right. And yes, yeah. but they're a kid people. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And our job as a parent is to raise strong, independent, good people. Yeah. My daughter, she's 21 years old. She lives in South Carolina, mm-hmm. right? 21 years old, on her own, South Carolina. Yeah. She moved to Philly first, was there for a year, works for a company that brought her to these two places. Yeah. And it was part of the, the hiring process was, we're going to bring you here for a year, we're going to bring you to a different place for a year, but we're not going to tell you where. Right. But... I had this conversation with her. I was confident and okay with her doing that because I know how much I beat her up on certain things. Right, right. right? And I I mean that in a loving way. Like I know like being hard on them, the kids, for certain things and certain responsibilities Mm -hmm. and on all these things, I knew that someday they're not going to be living under my roof and that they're going to have to fight hard and know how to do that. Right. 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 And that is so important. A hundred percent. And I think that Matt, one of the things that I feel compelled to share with you is a moment in my life where I felt probably the most helpless or hopeless and a victim. And it was when my husband and I were going for through our fertility journey. Sure. And I had struggled to get pregnant with our second child. We had a little boy, um, about a year and a half at the time when I was going through this. We went through a medical procedure that that got us pregnant. We had twins and I lost them. I was so mad. Oh, I was mad, angry, frustrated, didn't understand why God would give me something and then take it away. And it was when I understood his perspective as my father that it all clicked and made sense because here's the deal. I had a child at home. Mm -hmm. My one and a half year old didn't like to be put in time out, but I had to do it in order to make him the person that he's supposed to be. And if I were to look at him and think, well, it makes me uncomfortable to put him in timeout, so I'm not going to do that, then I would rob him of the person he's supposed to become. And while God didn't enjoy watching me hurting, he knew that he had to let me go through that because it was going to make me the person that I'm supposed to be. And once I that clicked, once I figured out that his agape love for me and his willingness to let me go through what I needed to because that was what strengthened my faith. That is what made me the person that I am. Without that experience, I would not be the person I am. That made all the difference. And so when it came time to become courageous enough to start my business, to drop, you know, I actually resigned from my, t- my dream job, my teaching job that I fought so hard for and, and worked so hard for, I resigned last July hmm. in order to pursue the things that he's calling me to do. But if it wasn't for that moment on my knees, hurting and recognizing that he loves me enough to take me through this, I understand now that I can trust him to go with me on this next part. That wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. But I know that if I trust him because he's brought me through things already, that he's going to take me to a life beyond anything I could have imagined. Yeah. You understood that you weren't in control of it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right? You understood that you were, we talked about an instrument mm-hmm. earlier too off camera, that you were an instrument. Right. And that you're, you, uh, you're, you were out of tune. Right. I mean. Right. It's remarkable. Yeah. Thanks, but it's, thanks for, yeah, thanks for doing those things. Yeah. What, uh, um, your podcast too. We're we're gonna talk for a while, but I, I'm just thinking of your podcast and um, what made you think of that? Because this is I feel like a good segue because it sounded like you were stuck. Yeah, you know, I I did. Yeah, yeah. The, so that's the thing. That's interesting um, because I never thought of. I never thought I was stuck. That's yeah. what's so interesting about this yeah. is that God knew I was stuck. I didn't know I was stuck. Yeah, and He was gracious enough to give me the tool. Before I knew I was stuck. I, I want to clarify something. Yeah. You were successful. 
Yeah. I mean, and, I, yeah. Yeah. And you you had a great mm-hmm. dream job. Mm-hmm. It was your dream job. It yep. wasn't someone else's right. that was, you know, all these yeah. things. So you weren't really stuck. No. But, you know, that mental block and some of these things and doing and understanding that we're not in control. I don't really care. And I've said this many, many, many times yeah. to hundreds and even thousands of people. I don't, it doesn't matter your belief system. Right. I am completely convinced that no matter your belief system, when you come to that moment of understanding that you're not in control of anything but how you respond right. to what life is, right. you're in trouble. I mean, you're just in trouble. Yep. So talk about the unstuck. I wanted to clarify that. Yeah, okay. It wasn't like you were in a bad place. No, no. So, um, so the Unstuck podcast is a platform that I really wanted to give people the permission to know that it's okay to be stuck, Mm -hmm. but the hope and inspiration to get yourself out of it. And I wanted to show them that there are successful people out there who have also felt that way, but the important thing is that they do not stay there. That goes back to my thread that goes through every single thing I've read, and I felt like that is a gift for us to recognize that we don't have to stay there, right? And, you know, Matt, you you talked about platform while we were just conversing before we started here, and... I was actually sick um, during this whole COVID crisis. And what that did was that it forced me to slow down and it forced me to have to really think about what is my platform? What is the purpose? How can I articulate all of this craziness that is such a different life than what I thought it was gonna be? If you would have told me that I was gonna be doing any of the things that I'm doing 10 years ago, I would have laughed, right? And now for a quick break for you to think of someone you can encourage today. And now back to the episode. But it it all came together actually when I was reading scripture and I was reading the parable of the servants. Yeah. And I'm not a I'm not very good at memorizing scripture and I'm not very good at quoting things. I'm a big picture thinker. Yeah. So I get the big picture. Yeah. And for years I've told my husband that if I can die and people say, Well done, good and faithful servant, mm-hmm. I've done my job. I want to make an impact on the people around me. I want their lives to be better because of something that I did, okay? And it wasn't um, until I read this this scripture recently when I was going through this, this time in my life where I was trying to figure all this out, how I can articulate what it is that's driving me to do the things that I'm doing. And he gave me this insight that I had totally missed forever. And it's the fact that he gave three servants, three different set of coins, right? Mm -hmm. He gave one five, he gave one two, he gave one one. And the one that was given five and the one that was given two invested their coins. And the one that was given one buried them. We cannot serve if we are not using the tools that he has given us. Mm -hmm. And and if you were to ask me, um, one of the branding experts that I follow, had had said, you know, if you can think about like what enrages you and what breaks your heart and you combine those two things and that's where your business and your platform is and that's what you solve, that's your purpose in your business, right? And and I and I realized like the thing that enrages me and the thing that breaks my heart is that when people are put on this earth with these amazing gifts and they let fear, doubt, safety, keep them from fulfilling their Air quotes, by the way, safety, you- Safety. Air quotes, safety. You know, let them keep in this little bubble and not use the gifts and realize that they're burying those, like the man, the servant that buried his one. And you cannot serve to your fullest capacity if you are burying the gifts that you've been given. And God is not going to continue to give you new gifts if you're not using the ones he's given you. He's not going to reveal those gifts. Right. He, he, there, I, I believe, in especially my circumstance, I built this table, by the way. Awesome. That was a gift. Yeah. Right? Right. Like, but now I don't. Right? And that's okay. 
Right? And I think that that's the, one of the things I have other gifts too. That's what I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah, like that was the hardest thing for me though because yeah. sometimes, sometimes he gives you gifts for a season. Yeah. And, and if he hadn't given me the gifts that I, that I've been given, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So Matt, like I have a podcast, right? One of my goals, my dreams is to someday be on a stage with as many people as, as you are, but on a topic that I'm passionate about. See, here's the kind of the crazy thing. I'm going to tell you this quick story. Um, when I was a student in anesthesia school, the last presentation I had to give before graduation was a five minute presentation on a topic that I was intrigued about. Hmm. The program director said, that's a great topic. Would you be willing to give that on the um, platform of the this nurse anesthesia annual conference that we have every year? It's gonna be an hour long. And I thought, oh my gosh, how am I gonna take this five minute presentation into a 60 minute presentation? I'm not a public speaker. I'm a new grad. How am I gonna talk to all of these people who are experts, my mentors? But I did it, right? That That lecture that I gave, led me to an invitation to speak in South Dakota for a group of nurse anesthetists. Somebody in that audience saw me from Minneapolis, asked me to come and speak at this. And so before I knew it, I had been speaking on a stage in front of hundreds of people for now 12 years. He led these things in my way in order to bring me to my ultimate purpose. Yeah. None of those things would have happened if I hadn't been a nurse anesthetist. I love, it's a gift to be with my patients, but I don't think that that's where it's gonna end for me. And he, he gave you those breadcrumbs just at the right mm -hmm. times and, uh, and the, the, it got bigger and bigger. Right. I love that. Yeah. That's, he's good at that. He is, <laughs> and it's hard though, cause you have an identity, right? Like you had an identity as a carpenter and, for a, sure. and a wonderful, you know, all the things that you had done. And I have an identity as a nurse anesthetist. I had an identity as as a faculty member for this for the, this prestigious program. And and I had to set my ego aside when I when I stepped down from that position, Matt. That was one of the hardest things I've ever done because my ego said, "You've worked hard for this. Mm -hmm. You've been in school for like a hundred years to do this job, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and now you're going to set that down. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you what are you doing? Yeah." But I know that he's leading me and that I knew that I couldn't do both excellent. Mm -hmm. And so I had to make a decision. And one of those decisions was gonna allow me to be with my family more and one less. And our friend Jan Reed always says, do what you yeah. would love, right? Yeah. And, and I knew that the season that I had been in was a gift and I'm grateful for every second of it, but it's not where he's leading me now. And I had to be okay to let that go because sometimes when we're holding on to something so tightly, it prevents us from being able to accept what it is that he's trying to give us. Yeah. And once I was able to set that down and unclench my fists, my hands were open to be able to receive what he was giving me. And my life is beyond anything I could have dreamed of. And it was because I've been able to let him lead the next step. I want to back you up to, you mentioned servant leader a few different times. Yep. Um, what does that look like to you? Because that I, I've mm -hmm. seen like, it depends upon who you talk to and I've seen like different books and they say different things to it. What does that mean to you, servant leader? Yeah, so again, I think that my initial feeling towards that came from the book, The Servant. Yeah. Um, it's really having agape love for the people who you serve. Yeah. And. But how can you be a leader? I'm going to play devil's yeah, advocate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, 100%. But you, you see what I'm saying? I do. Like, so that's a confusing topic for a lot of people. It is, it is. So I think that, it, to me, it literally goes back to love. Okay. So as a leader in this book, he talks about how, you, um, and again, like Matt, I'm not a scripture yeah, no, memorizer, I, you can, but, you, but you love can, is patient, love yeah, is kind, right? right? So you go to that verse yeah. and, and if you look at that and if, and if I had a separate conversation with you and I said, Matt, what makes a good leader? Your list would be patient, kindness, trust, communication, all the things, right? That verse describes a servant leader. Yeah. Okay. So. So then that goes back to love is, right? Well, if you go back to 
to what the true meaning of love is in that context. It's not love as a feeling, it's love as a verb, mm -hmm. okay? So I have to love someone enough to do what they need and not what I want. So sometimes that means that as a leader, I have to make really hard decisions that are gonna benefit the people that I'm serving. What do you do with the servant that buried the coin? That's my what, purpose. What's the, what's the lesson there? I think that, um, honestly, I think that that's been my platform right now. Okay. Is to try to help the people who are burying their coins. And the thing that's interesting about that particular scripture too that I want to go back to is that he gave one of them five coins and he gave one of them three. He knows what you can handle. For sure. So don't waste it, right? And so I think that's my purpose. It's like, yeah, it would be amazing for me to pick all people that I can work because basically what I do is I help people not only feel confident in their skin, but I'm more passionate actually about helping other people start businesses that are going to help our cause. Mm. Okay. And so while I, I share people's, you know, ability to take care of their skin, that's a small part of what I do. More of it is really just building leaders and building business owners is what I do. Mm. And I think that my my drive what what make, wakes me up in the morning is to make sure that when i'm selecting business leaders and business owners that want to work with me and when i'm mentoring them and i'm coaching them that i'm making sure that they're not burying their talents yeah and i think that probably where that passion comes from is is in my own transformation in my business so i shared with you a little bit when we were conversing before this that i had struggled with confidence my whole mm -hmm. life having my business has completely taken me to a place that i never thought was possible with that um the the transformation that i've made in my own self and what i'm modeling for my kids is beyond anything that i could have imagined and it's all been because i started my business mm. and i've let the business teach me the lessons that I need to be a better parent, a better person, um, more confident, more resilient, having grit, all those things have been gifts from my business. And I want other people to have those gifts too. So I try to mentor them, right? So sometimes I have to help them do things that are scary, right? Because There's I know- There's a lot know, of scary things to do in, in those situations. Because I know that yeah. it's what they need and not what they want, Yeah. right? Can we get out of that uh, mindset as a society? We give so many people what they want. Mm -hmm. So I think it starts at home. Yeah. And I think that probably goes back to where we were talking about with this leadership book that I want to write for families. Yeah. Mother Teresa said, if you want to change the world, it starts in your home. Right. And so we have to, as parents, stop being friends with our kids. Um, we have to let them learn the lessons that they need to, to build resilience and grit yeah. and accountability. And honestly, I think it starts in at home and in our schools. And I have hope. If you don't have hope, you have nothing. Yeah, right, yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah. So I'm hopeful. Some people call me Pollyanna, whatever, I don't care, I'm <laughs> owning it. Because if you don't have something to hope for, then, then you're lost. We talked about off camera to the center um, mm -hmm. so oftentimes people change their center, mm -hmm. right? Even, even as, um, believers, Christians, whatever you want to call it, right? they change their center. Their focus is popularity or their fo focus, their center is friends or in, e even you can actually get into a place where your, your center is, is church. Right, uh, church as a as a building, as an organization, um, and all those things, and that building isn't, and that fellowship is mm -hmm. not. That's not a good center. Right, it might be good things. Right, but so what happens now when those centers change? Mm -hmm. You know, our friends change, right. and church obviously at this moment in time has dramatically changed. Right, right, and all those things, and so when you have that center um and don't change that center unless you have a really good reason to mm -hmm. um i think is is really how we can have that hope yep that's and again i i don't i'm not trying to say somebody needs to believe the same thing i believe mm -hmm. 
But I think if that center is something that continually changes, we've seen that in science the last two months. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up masks and you don't have to say anything about it, okay? Yeah. But yeah. in the furniture business, mm -hmm. I had to have material safety data sheets. Mm -hmm. And so I had to know what mask to use at what mm -hmm. time and what process, right? right? And all those things. Mm -hmm. Well, they did studies on those and, and all these things and, and blah, blah, blah. How come in two months, and you don't have to answer this again, but how come in two months is, is just a rhetorical question. How come in two months they've changed the, the laws and the rules on, on decades of study on these masks? How does that happen? So I believe it's the center isn't right. That's my belief. Yeah. And I might get in trouble for that. Yeah. Did you know that that I had to like submit something to YouTube and Facebook and Instagram to get a podcast put back up because we talked about something that wasn't literally in, in YouTube's policy. Okay. WHO. Yeah. We we have to discuss mm -hmm. what they believe. That's yeah. their policy. Okay. Isn't that sad? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize our that. conversation might get taken down yeah okay just all right um i'm man, just gonna say is, that this just is a really out there. Okay, so. you don't have to say anything about the mask no. but what i'm saying is is the the whole point of it it's fluctuated so much no, I, and i think it's so confusing for people and i think that's when they can't have hope that's when they yeah that's when fear creeps in in ways yeah. that are, are unexplainable to mm -hmm. even people who have a solid belief system right and all that kind of stuff when those things fluctuate when those rules change right and for no apparent explanation other than we think so they think they need to change right that's where hope is lost that is where we just can't have it anymore because we don't have that foundation that center and now a quick break from the podcast make a pizza Joe on the couch get a massage We'll be back in uh, about 10 seconds. And now back to the episode. Right. No, there's my rant. Yeah, no, it's you you have a good point and I think that's probably been part of the um So the problem. Okay, so I would say that if I were to tell you what my center is, mm -hmm. the thing that is that has been my guiding light throughout all this journey is literally goes back to well done good and faithful servant yeah and so for me it's all about way to sidestep the masks good job no but i'm I mean, teasing you no I'm, i know I'm totally but i'm gonna i'll you. bring you back no, no, there. no 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 i'm totally teasing no you. i know i know no, i know but no. like i don't mean I, to mess up your train it, of no thought, it's but. just um like i think that the masks it's just i, I you don't it, have i'm teasing no no, totally no but I, this is you. my point is that i think that it, in my in my view it's how can we, how can I serve as many, right? My controversial response to your mask question is sure. I think that there has been a lack of serving the good of humanity and more of serving certain interests along the need, way. Need and want. Right? Need and want. You're, to me, you're back to need and want. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I think that sometimes um you know the needs how can i put this um you don't yeah well, let's move on okay we can move are you on. sure totally move on okay. i was kidding you didn't have to okay. comment on it all no, right no, no i'm totally okay absolutely and with all due respect to everybody who um wants to wear a mask wear a mask yeah i mean uh, that's great I the the place that I get into, <clears throat> excuse me, place that I get into is um, where a certain I don't want to call it agenda, but a uh, certain uh, philosophy or thought process has to be projected on everybody else. Right. That's where I get yeah. confused. Okay, so are you talking? And then maybe we should just clarify because yeah. maybe in my mind I'm thinking of one thing and you're talking about another. Sure. Okay. So my world. Yes. Right. is like full on like All we call it ppe like yes. i'm like literally wearing a riot mask yes over my face yes. when i intubate somebody yes. okay so 
there's been a fluctuation in PPE and whether we're supposed to wear did it. Did you as... put me under for my arm surgery? I didn't know you back then. I know. Did I? I can't remember who did. I don't know. Yeah. I know a few of yeah, the nurses. Yeah, a few of us. And... Yeah. And so like there's been fluctuations even in just like what are we supposed to wear and when. Yeah. Right? And then you kind of wonder like, well, who is this serving? Like, is it mm. like, is it that are we trying to serve our patients the best? Are we trying to serve our staff? Are we just trying to serve um, the people that are making money off of things and who's hoarding things? Do you know what I'm saying? That's that's a really good perspective. And so, so, my, so my thoughts on masks takes me back to surgery yeah. and the fact that every other day it's a different policy and whether or not I'm supposed to wear something for certain things or not. And I think that ultimately, you know, we're trying to do the best we can. I think yeah, yeah, the people yeah. that are making the decisions are doing the best they can. But sometimes I think interests of certain people. Money, Especially in such a short period of time, yes. right? I mean, this is, we're not talking five years ago to yeah. today. We're talking right. about 12 and a half minutes ago right. to right now. Right. I mean, it's it's changing things are, that Things fast. are changing. Things are changing, Matt. And I think that like the masks, I'm going to take this back to like when I taught, when I was, yeah. t I, I taught evidence-based practice. Yeah. Um, one of the things that was frustrating to students when they learn evidence-based practice, because I teach them how to look at a study and be able to determine whether or not you're going to take what that study says and apply it to the way that you practice medicine. Okay. And how do you read a study and how do you give it enough credibility in order to actually do what it is asking you to do? Yeah. And how do you look at that? And then teach them how to perform research in order for us to give the best standards, right? But what was frustrating for them to learn and what was frustrating for me to teach is that it's so unbelievably imperfect. Yeah. There is no way for us to truly, truly be able to study something in, in humanity that is like we would want to in a lab yeah for for many many reasons right right and so and that makes sense things are changing so much because science is imperfect mm -hmm. goes back to our our yeah. our center yeah. right mm -hmm. um we do the best with what we have at the time with yeah. the best science that we have at the time but even the best is never going to be perfect right now right and so it's it's unfortunate and I think that the masks and, and all of that, people have this perception that the science and medicine is perfect and it's not. Yeah. Um, I was tested three times for COVID. Yeah. Came back negative. Yeah. Still not convinced I didn't have it. Yeah. Because I know that science isn't perfect. Right. Right. And so then we have people that are going out into public and they have very strong opinions about masks and who needs to be wearing them and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I can't tell you that is perfect science. I don't know if it's helpful or not. Right. The, the, so the thing that gets me worked up the most, frankly, is uh, sawdust particles, right? I, I don't remember what the, the micron level yeah. of sawdust, but we can see it. Mm -hmm. Sawdust, we can right. see. Right. You know, when we're creating it, we right. can see sawdust. Yep. So it's big. Mm -hmm. A cloth mask. Right. Doesn't do anything. Right. In or out. Right. I mean, period. So that's where it's confusing for me. Yeah. It's and like any face covering, you know, and sure, is there a percentage involved? Obviously, there's a percentage involved that it reduces mm -hmm. it or whatever else. Right. But I, I, that's where I get confused. Yeah. Is um, because the microns and all these things. And, and we have our own uh, Michael Osterholm uh, in Minnesota and what he's talking about it. And then the whole rest of the world I isn't. Right. And uh, he's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, he's studied this for 30 some years. Right. Um, so I get so confused on it that way. Yeah. And, and so, okay. So I'm going to tell you um, that and we, we i only have like the perspective <laughs> no, from like right. somebody that like is 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 working in the med medical field so here's the, i'm going to tell you this and yeah. maybe this is going to be not the right answer i stopped watching the news a long time oh, ago i don't watch the news okay? right yeah, um so I, I don't what get my so what i do news. what i do is i have to do what i can control right you we did sure. not talk about this so i know that i can wash my hands yep and I know that I Wait, should. Wait, we're supposed to wash our hands? Right. Yes, you should probably start doing that. Um, you know, I, I know that there's certain things that I can do personally to protect myself. Yeah. And I literally have to give the rest up to God. Yeah. And I, and I, 
read the emails from my employer that ha- are there to try to protect me. And I try to trust that they know what they're talking about because I, I trust their intentions. Yeah. Right. Trust the intent for sure. Intention. Um, and, and I know that, you know, when as an employee, we did get an email saying that the infectious rate um, dramatically dropped after they instituted a mask policy at my employers. So I have to trust that. However, um, I also have, you know, read early on that, that the particles are smaller than even my N95 masks. Yeah. That's a reason that I have my shield on. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. And so I think that like, if I could bring all of this back to, I just want to encourage people to give each other grace. Yeah. Um, I have a good friend of mine, Matt, who, who, um, shared with me her anxieties about wearing a mask. Yeah. And she shared with me how, when she was younger, she was molested yeah. and her, offender had put his hand over her face, over her mouth and her nose. And to this day, she can't handle anything covering her face. So she can't deal with wearing a mask going into the grocery store. So she does, she goes to the grocery store, she gets her things and she has to deal with the snarls from people who are judging her for not having her mask on. And so just going back to just giving each other compassion and grace and recognizing that the people that are giving her snarls are doing so because they're not coping. They're, they're living in fear yeah. right now. Right. Totally. And so just remembering that throughout all of this, I just, let's find a way to serve one another. Yeah. Let's find a way to, to come together because God can work all of this out for the good of those who believe in him. Yeah. And so how can you take this opportunity and I must use this as an opportunity to make this a better place to live, a better way to interact with one another and to not live out of fear, but live out of love for one another, live out of agape love for one another, which means that I tell my kids, I love them enough to say, I don't care. You're not going to, to Walmart because I don't trust that you're not going to touch everything and then put your <laughs> in, your fingers in your mouth, come right? Come on, kids don't touch right? anything. So they don't like that answer because I won't <laughs> let them go to town because I don't trust that they're going to be safe, right? And so, you know, having having love for one another and sometimes that means just having giving grace to people. And so... That's what I'm going to say on the masks. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I I just yeah. Um what what's next? Do you oh, know man. what's next? I don't. Good for you. You shouldn't know Mm-mm. what's next. No, I just, just literally um every day I pray that God um sends the people to me that I can help. Yeah. I pray that he gives me the wisdom to recognize them the wisdom to know what to say and the courage to say it. And then I just take the next step in faith. But as our friend Jan Reed will tell me too, she says this or something better. Yeah. Did she tell you what we're working on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Super excited. Yeah. And so, you know, I have these big plans. I have these ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, I have my, my center that guides my business. People might be surprised to know that I feel very strongly that God brought this business into my life because this is the platform that he has given me to bring people to him. Yeah. And that if they come to me because they need help with their skin, they're going to know me and through me, they're going to know him. And I just have to trust that he's going to take care of the rest. But I have big plans for myself and a big plans for, for him. Um, but I know that no matter what I have in my, I visualize every morning and whatever it is that I'm visualizing, I have to trust that it's this or something better. And so I'm excited. I'm excited to see what's next, right? That's a perfect attitude to have with it too. I love that. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Anything you want to say before we wrap up? I got a really cheesy ending. A really way to, really I love it. cheesy way no, to close I this just, out. So. Oh gosh, you know, okay. So I'm just going to go off of my center and I just want to encourage anybody that's listening yeah. to stop burying your coins. Yeah. Stop it. Maybe you can bury some coins. <laughs> right now it might be good to bury some coins, like literally. Yeah, right. Like literally, like literally like gold, but like. <laughs> right. But stop, not in your mattress. Stop. No, I'm stop. sorry. Yeah. Stop just holding yourself back. Yeah. That if you're willing to just Stop hiding your talents under a lamp 
or under um you know what i'm talking about like whatever you know what i mean totally Help me out with this, will no, you? No, we'll, we're going to let it roll with that. Okay, God, people come understand. on, man. No. Um, but You're being you, and that's perfect. Stop, stop putting under a rock. Stop, stop hiding it. Stop being afraid. Stop trying to be safe because you cannot serve yourself. You cannot serve others if, you, if you're doing that. And I want to remind you, as a servant leader, you, as a parent, your kids are watching you. And if you're living a mediocrity filled life full of safety and, and mundane and you want more for them, they are going to learn more from you by watching you than they ever will by listening to you. And so if your life does not look like what you'd want for your kids, that tells me that you are burying something, you're not using it, because he will give you the next steps, but show your kids the life that you want for them. Be the servant leader, lead with love and stop burying your coins because there is an amazing world out there that needs you for the gifts that you've been given. And I cannot wait to hear through this platform, what that has done for you. Excellent. Thank you. Here's my cheesy closing. Are you ready? Yep. I think you're shiny. Thank you for being strong. Thank you for being hope. Thank you for being influential. Thank you for showing in in everybody and showing yourself that you're necessary. Thank you for being you. Thank you, Matt. I got a shirt for you too. Oh, sweet. All right. That's awesome. Thanks everybody for listening and watching. We'll see you next time.